How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be discussing ribosome subunit weights. The first thing we need to know about ribosome subunit weights is how we actually measure those. We're going to measure these in a unit called a Svedberg, abbreviated S, as you can see in the ribosomes that I've drawn to the left. It's basically a measurement of how quickly something will run to the bottom of a tube when we put that tube into a centrifuge. What we really need to know for the MCAT, though, is that big molecules have lots of Svedbergs or have a big sedimentation coefficient. So big molecules, lots of Svedbergs, small molecules, smaller sedimentation coefficient, a smaller value for its sedimentation coefficient measured in Svedbergs. Okay. So big things we can think of as sedimenting more quickly getting to the bottom. Okay, so big things drop more, which would be pretty intuitive. And if that isn't making sense and you do want to know a bit more about it, I've linked the Wikipedia article in the description below if you want to learn a bit more, of course, about what a Svedberg is. But what we need to know for the MCAT are the ribosomal subunit weights of two different ribosomes. The first of which being a prokaryotic ribosome which is going to be a little bit smaller than a eukaryotic ribosome. That should make sense because your typical prokaryote might be something like a bacterium, and they're a lot smaller than a eukaryote, so it should be a little bit intuitive. Another thing that's nice is we see that 30, 50, 70 pattern and 40, 60, 80 pattern. So one mnemonic we could use if we wanted is the kind of alliterative eukaryotes are even. So E, E there. And then one that's kind of funny too is prokaryotes are odd. And you could also use prime for this if you'd like. So the three, five, and seven are all prime numbers. I kind of like odd though, because three, five, and seven are odd numbers, even though 30, 50, and 70 aren't. Also, prokaryotes are kind of weird and odd in general. Bacteria look kind of strange. Another one we could use is just knowing that we start out at 30s, and if we go up by units of 10 Spedbergs, all the way to 80, we know that these groupings will be our small ribosomal subunit. Our large subunit. And this will be the whole ribosome. And you may be asking yourself, well, if the small is 30, and the large is 50, how come this isn't 80? And that's a great question, and that's because Fedbergs don't add up perfectly. And the reason for that is because they are basically taking a look at sedimentation coefficients rather than actual molecular weight, so they don't add up perfectly. Same thing with the eukaryotic ribosome. We have 40 and 60, so shouldn't this be 100? Well, actually it doesn't quite add up to 100. It will be larger, but we'll only go to 80, okay? So a 70S and an 80S is what you'd see if you had an intact ribosome sedimenting down in a centrifuge, okay? Same with the 80S. This would be what you would see when a eukaryotic ribosome was intact and going down in a centrifuge. That's it for today's MedCat video. Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out my comprehensive amino acid playlist, which can be found in the link in the description below.